Welcome to Tales from the Caveside, where Lillian and Chris, we bought a cave house and finca on the outskirts of a small Spanish town. Follow us as we learn to renovate and create a home that we will be proud of. You just kept f***ing talking as usual. <laughs> no, I don't. Yes, do. I don't talk to anybody. I'm a very quiet sort of person. You even talk to yourself if I'm not around. Well, that's because I, I I, I'm the only person who understands me. You could be off in the background. I can hear this chunter, chunter, chunter. Yeah. Well, that's because... thing blinding chunter, chunter, chunter. And I think, who's he talking to? The, the only there, person there's, there's... that listens. <laughs> There isn't even a dog there for you to talk to. There Ex you are talking to something. Exactly, because even the dogs don't listen. <laughs> you flipping... What? <laughs> OK. Yes, so, right. after that, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and oh. welcome to the rant. <laughs> that, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the video. Yeah. So, um... Or ham this week. I don't know, I'm busy talking to myself, apparently. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> the plumber came, you've just jingled the camera. I know. The, the plumber came and made a start on yeah. the plumbing, he as did. plumbers do. Yes. Um, we started doing the cabling for the electricity, the, the tubing, the macaroni mm. for the electricity. Yep, um, Lillian had a play with the grinder. Yeah, I used the grinder, don't like it, but I used the grinder. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, however, I did use a new toy. We we played. Uh, who are? <laughs> Not that sort. No, cave. My crikey! You can't talk about these things on on the. Wash internet. your brains out with soapy water. <laughs> but you started it. In your endo bingo. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I played with lime wash. There you go. Yeah. Not what he's talking about at all. I wasn't even talking about it. I was telling people not to think it. Ah, okay. Indeed. There's a difference. Anyway, guys, enjoy. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> There you go, there's the depth with Thank the uh, yay sort in the back yeah. and bring it to this lip, ready for final plaster. Perfect. Awesome. You'll notice that that is not straight up and down, that's actually been done on purpose. Not because you can't draw a straight line? No. Uh, in my defence this time, no. <laughs> Because when the cable comes in, this stuff goes in, you don't want sharp bends. So you see we're going to run down. Uh, I need to dig out a little bit more there. Um, and then it'll come down this way. So we have it like this, wider. Yeah. Um, then there'll be a, there'll actually be a, probably a junction box up there, I think, maybe. I haven't decided yet. We can't put it here, obviously, because the wall's going to be there. We burn a short wall. But then if you can imagine the next piece from the junction box up there will be coming around again so you need flowing flowing curves. Yes. To go down. So if you're going left and right with this stuff, uh, because obviously it's not got cables in. This is going to be a concrete floor once all the tube and pipe work and everything's all done. Um, we need to run electricity. So, I've got a double socket here, single socket here that's going to be for fridge freezer. Over there is already done for the uh, boiler heater. We also need to do one here. And as you saw on the video a few seconds ago, Lillian had to go on the grinder. So, cut out. Now, this tubing, this macaroni, this conduit, whatever you call it, wherever you live, 
here they call it macaroni. Um, it's designed to be in walls, but it's not designed to be under floors. Now, I'm sure that there's going to be no traffic here, so therefore it'll be fine. It's only the same as being in a wall. Belt and braces, not taking any risks. This is overkill, but this is the armoured version of this. <clears throat> and it's going to be under concrete, so we're going to be running it inside this. Rather be safe than sorry. We've already measured it. We actually had a test fit that just slides down lovely. Um, so we've just got to cut it now. And it's not that strong against a knife, but it's a lot easier with a little hacksaw blade. So we've already marked it. And it cuts as easy as that. Okay, um, also I'll be Run, take, running all the wires and connecting them all up to everything. Um, but I will stop at the fuse box over there. Yeah. Um, and I'll just put the wires in. And then when an electrician comes, he will check it all, make sure everything's correct, it's earthed properly, it's good connections, and things like that. And then he will place the fuse ray on with the fuses in, into the fuse box there, and then connect it all up once he's happy that this part's all okay. And then be connected to the main fuse box, which is outside. Yep. And so that's all nice and safe. I did that in the in the room inside the caves, which used to be an outside room. I completely rewired that. And then when the electrician came to add a couple of extra fuses in that we needed for in here, <clears throat> he checked it all before they was plugged in as well. So I'm happy to do all this stuff, but I'm not an electrician. I'd rather an electrician checks it for safety. Also, it saves us a lot of money. An electrician just comes along, tests everything. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. And then connects it all up. Um, and also for insurance as well. If you do your own electricity, and you're not qualified and you have a problem and you have a fire or somebody gets electrocuted, it's your responsibility and the insurance won't pay. Yeah. Insurance will never pay. It's just it's just insane to to do all these things and not know exactly what you're doing. Even if you do know exactly what you're doing, if once you're not the, qualified. If you're not qualified, once the electrician comes and he tests it all and connects it, he's when he did the caves for us, he then certified it. He had it certified, we're certified. That everything is okay so exactly, exactly. as you say that's what insurance yeah, needs yeah and we had we've got all the necessary paperwork like that so the electricity company was very happy to turn our potential up yes. which was on one one kilowatt when we moved in we're now on three and a half kilowatts but they will not turn it up and give you more power unless it's certified by a registered electrician who's on their program yeah it's not money to make money it's people's safety, it's people's lives. Um, yeah, I mean, we could have done the plumbing. I'm not a plumber, and I don't really know what I'm doing, but imagine if we'd done everything, and then there's a leak. Yeah. It could undo everything. At least we're getting a plumber, he knows what he's doing. Exactly. And this stuff is easy now, the modern mm. stuff, he just pushed it, it's really easy. But a plumber does plumbing things you know it's right. A flood's disastrous. An electrician does electrical stuff. It's got to be right. Because <laughs> electricity can be disastrous and too. Electricity can be very dangerous, a lot more dangerous than leaking plumbing could ever be. Exactly. Unless it interacts with electricity at the same time. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, we're paying for a pl uh, an electrician to connect it all to the mains. This is Yeso Rapido. Mm -hmm. And I'm not very happy, you know, with using it. Oh no, the socket's not level. <sighs> It's at a jaunty angle like everything else in this place. Hello, oh, we've got a 
render the wall anyway. I don't know, but it would be nice to have it set square. Yes. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. <laughs> do I break it out and do it again? Afraid so. Okay. Take two. Yeah, I'll try not to mess it up this time. Righty ho. One mm. down. God, one knows how many to go. Lots. Doing, doing. Not today. There's only really that there, that there, and the junction box and the tube. We can't do too much more, otherwise, um, <clears throat> we'll get too far ahead of ourselves. And then we've got to add the other electricity to it. Of course. Yeah. Well, that's solid. Okay. That's cool. So, after uh, much falling out with the Yeso, Lillian decided it would be much more peaceful if she took over. Uh, it's very, very sticky stuff. It sets very, very fast. Unfortunately, it had decided it would much rather stick to me than where I wanted it to go. So Lillian just sort of like said, look, the language is becoming a little bit too uh, fruity. Stressful. <laughs> no, fruity. Fruity, yeah. It was a bit more sour than eating concentrated lemons, I would probably suggest. <laughs> so she took over for a piece of the neighbourhood. Okay, so that's all fitting now. Um, there's some down the back as well to hold the, the uh, electricity tube against the rock work. Um, and that's a junction box. It hasn't been done further down because the plumber needs that space to work and he asked us obviously not to fit the electricity as it could be in his way. So we've left it so it's not in his way. We can actually lift it up. It's all been put in there. It's a bit of a mess, but it's, uh, that doesn't matter. It's all going to be rendered over the top. There's the other socket, and there's the other socket. And there's the uh, inspector inspecting. And stealing a piece of paper. And, uh, there go. That. and stealing paper. Okay, this is an experiment that we did. Uh, we wasn't sure if it would work or not, even though from the research it said it would. We've made a lime putty, um, only a small little amount, and we're going to make a, a whitewash up, and then a further experiment to try it through a, a sprayer, as opposed to painting it on by a brush. We just need to uh, paint a, a small section of the wall where the, uh, the hot water heater is going to go, because uh, it's going to be hard plumbed in, and the plumber said, if you're going to paint, I would make sure it's done before because uh, I'm not coming along to remove it again so you can paint behind it. Obviously, if we pay pay for the privilege, you would, but uh, we're not going to be uh, intend to do that. So this has been sat since, no, I don't know. We, we had a discussion about it earlier and we think it's around just before Christmas, maybe November time. So uh, we're guessing about six months, maybe seven. Um, it hasn't set as it shouldn't. I actually stuck my finger in and then was reminded that I shouldn't be sticking my fingers in places like that. But it's all, it's set, it's like a putty, it's, it is, it's, it's quite incredible. So Lynn's going to scoop some out with her uh, gloves on. I'm going to make up about, I don't know, about a litre, maybe, maybe a little bit more. It's, oh, it feels really strange. Yeah. It feels like corn flour. You beat me to it. It feels like corn flour. Yeah. We've got a putty. Yep. Okay. Ha! I knew this broken water filter would come in handy one day. So that's a litre of water. Just going in. And I would suggest that that'll be okay. Oh, we've gained a fly. <laughs> swim, swim fly. <clears throat> okay, and just mix this up to make a really watery paste, yeah. Well, paint. Uh, 
the only problem that I can see, or we can see, should I say, with doing it through the air sprayer, or airless sprayer, should I say, is that uh, you got to keep agitating it. So uh, we'll see where we go. What you found? Dog hairs. Dog hairs. I bet it's dog hairs from yep. the dogs and their hair. Okay, so this is our first test for the sprayer. We don't know if it's even going to spray. It might spray the liquid, but we don't know if it'll actually work or not. So we're going to do our little bit of test wall there to see what happens. Uh, we don't expect to see white. We expect to see wet. And okay. then once it dries, it'll dry white. And you, you build it up in thin layers. Okay. Well, it's definitely wet. Uh, I think this spray nozzle's in the wrong direction. Yeah, it looked like... <clears throat> It looked like it was that way, so I assumed it would give me spray that way. Yeah, so we need to turn but the it actually looks the other way. So you just slap that, slap that off a little bit, and then the nozzle goes to its fixed position, and then you tighten it again. Okay. Okay, uh, just try a little bit we'll somewhere else. here. Yep. Bear in mind though, because this is lime wash, that you've got to keep it agitated because the lime particles will always want to fall down to the bottom of the vessel. Ready? Yes. Okay. So we'll give that a few minutes to dry. If you come over close. And see where we are. You can see where the, the bricks do that. Yeah. On the top there is white. There is white. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so what do you think? Are, are we going to continue this experiment or put it on in the correct way? <laughs> With a brush. With a brush. Give it 20 minutes. Yeah. Open the doors in here, get some air going through. Okay. Give it 20 minutes and see what we've got, and see what, yeah. what we think at that point. Well, it's definitely getting whiter as yes. it's drying in. Okay, so it's had some time. Um, as you can see, we don't where the over, over watered down spray was, it's called rivulets. This is the original colour and this is the first layer of the uh, whitewash attempting with the machine. So, a wow. couple of hours, <laughs> I was going to say. Wow. I was about to say. Wow. So a couple of hours have gone by and thoughts. Wow. That worked. <laughs> that experiment worked. Is it has it left a powdery residue though? Have you got clean fingers to wipe your hands? Yeah. It has. Maybe that gets cured with building the layers up. Well, the only thing I'm unhappy with is where my misuse of the machine. I had it set for too much coming out. Yeah, and it's stripped here. Camera, the chunk. The camera's actually struggling to focus because it's trying to do a white balance, I think. Okay. okay. So obviously there's thick rivulets of where it came down. And obviously that's uh, there now. What's your hand like? It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. So we haven't put it on too thick. No. It's just too wet. Yeah. Okay. We'll go for layer number three then. Okay. So this is coat number four? Yes. Four. four. Four about to go on. And it's doing well. Um, bit patchy near the bottom. But it seems to be working well. And we're not going to bother going down there because that's all got very plastered for this experiment. But the boss is going to go there. And she's But if you don't hurry up. If you don't hurry up, I can't see anything out of these glasses with a mask on. Let me spray, man. Okay. Get for it. Pardon? 
You speak in blue. <laughs> don't speak blue. I don't speak blue, I speak rubbish. <laughs> no, that's me. You're going to hate this. Well, I've just been yelled to come up and bring a camera. Yep. So you're here I am. It. You're going to hate it. First oh, reactions, Christmas Day and all that. What am I going to hate? The wall. Although you have to walk past it and you don't look. Oh, wow. It's not Oh rubbish. my goodness. It's not rubbish, is it? That is blinking awesome. That is five coats of sprayed on, which was a, which was us playing, <laughs> yeah. lime wash. Yeah, an experiment that hasn't gone bad. For a change. For a change. <laughs> that is awesome. Wow. Wow, yes. I don't know what else to say, I just keep saying wow. It's so funny. If ladies can have cleavage, I'm having some. Maybe you say read. Avert <laughs> your eyes. Okay, so, with that in mind, this wall we now know has got to be painted and we are very, very, very not happy. Uh, the roof that was so expertly fitted, unfortunately, it lost the battle against the rain. Oh, that is a story. Uh, yeah. Anyway, allegedly it's now been repaired because it doesn't actually rain in Spain too often, apparently. Uh, so, so, the light's not too good. Here, you take no, this, baby. No, I will. The light's will. not too good, and so it's half eight at night. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up or I'll have to redo it tomorrow. But you can see here these lines. Like tide marks. Like tide marks. The rain came down, all this was wet. Now it has dried in the middle. It's slightly darker colour than what was there originally. But it's left the tide marks. Yeah. And then I've got the same over here. So when somebody chucks a tea bag onto a countertop and takes a tea bag away and leaves the edge here. Yeah. There's a tide mark coming all the way down to here. And the same there, because it just poured in. Yeah. Um I was planning to leave this the natural lime finish. No painting, no nothing. I'm now gonna paint it because it just looks dire. However, maybe it's a blessing in disguise. I'm gonna put a positive spin on this one. Maybe it's a blessing in disguise because can you imagine um, in the daytime when you get the light coming through the, the roof lights yeah. and how bright it is, it's yeah. gonna be even more bright. And on a night time, when we've got lights on, it's oh, going to yeah. reflect the light even more, so it's going to be a brighter space. Of course it is. And the shadows created by the, the undulations uh, in the wall, they're going to look out nice. But... That wasn't the plan, that so that's was not, not the point. That was not the plan. No. It is poor workmanship. Thanks for watching the latest episode of Tales from the Caveside. If you enjoy what we're doing, please like and subscribe. We would really appreciate it.